Uh, good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Getting people to come in on a Friday evening uh, at 7 o'clock uh, is completely conclusively not an interest in strategy, but just friendship and affection. So I thank you. You know, it's really important that you did come, and we are very happy that you did. And uh, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about the people on the panel. Deepak uh, had no choice. He had to come. He's been a mentor for too many years to be able to avoid me. And so uh, he, he had to come. And uh, he was cautioning me that today is Raksha Bandhan and all that, but we, of course, didn't listen to any of that. Uh, Adi agreed readily, which was uh, very kind of him. But he's really intellectually curious, so he might actually be interested a little bit more uh, <laughs> than many others in, in, in the book. Uh, Chandra has been part of the book, so he had no choice. So even though he was in Munich in the morning and from Turkey, he had to come. And he has to talk about what he is doing with his strategy in, in, uh, uh, in TCS and how our, our book defines him. Uh, and then, you know, whenever you have co-authors, the co-author business is a very good one. Because there are some authors who do the heavy lifting. And we have got the heavy lifter here today. And we'll again make him do some more heavy lifting uh, right after uh, I, I, I introduce everyone. Martin is the director of our uh, Bruce Henderson Institute. And uh, he is really uh, re the, one of the smartest people in BCG. And so it's great to, to have uh, Martin here come down. He's coming in from Australia. He was also trying to claim some jet lag. Of course, it was not, he was not excused. And uh, what we want to do so that you don't feel too anxious about how long you're going to spend here. Uh, first, that we're going to get Deepak to just release the book. And then uh, after that, uh, I'm going to ask Martin to say a few words, uh, 10, 12 minutes, to just explain the basic concepts of the book for those of you who are going to be treacherous enough not to read it. And, and, and at least then you'll be able to sound uh, you know, uh, 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 quite uh, elegant in being able to explain the key concepts of the book. And then uh, we will uh, have a bit of a discussion where I will moderate and ask the panel different questions. Now, one of the key themes of this book is the strategy palette. And because of that, we were very key, keen and clear that your palette should not be dry while this discussion is going on. So there is wine, there is whiskey, there is beer, and there is food. And please help yourself. A book around uh, strategy, where it talks about strategy palettes, cannot have people uh, staying thirsty while they listen. So, uh, Deepak, could I ask you to now just release the book? Yes, so I want you to First, congratulate Martin Janmajaya and K N U T. I understand it's pronounced as Kunut. Am I right? Yes, that's right. There has been a buzz in India about the release of your book because it has been released elsewhere in US and UK. So there has been a buzz. Your strategy needs a strategy. That's the easy part. But the second title of the book is how to choose and execute the right approach. 
that is the tricky part that's the difficult part and the complex part which makes it more thoughtful and more insightful <clears throat> i recall a quote from napoleon bonaparte when he said after much deliberations discussions take time to deliberate take time to discuss but when the time comes stop thinking and go in so how do you take decisions i think that is what strategies are there how do you decide we all know we all understand that one size never fits every occasion the book the book is uh, why it makes it more interesting is that the authors have used anecdotal evidence they have shared their personal experiences and they have done in depth in depth analysis on uh, the tools which the reader needs to use in order to come to your strategy and order to take a decision what is the right approach book is easily readable it's based on uh, because it's based on experiences real practical experiences and it does not have too much of management jargon i have three take key takeaways and i'll be very brief first is assessing the environment based on predictability malleability and harshness can you predict can you shape it and can you survive it i think this are the this is one of the key takeaways i get the second which janme mentioned briefly is about this uh, strategy palette the five mantras they have used is first is be big be fast be first be the orchestrator and be viable this of course we will discuss when janmeja asks us questions the last take away i have and it's my bit is that if you need a strategy go to bcg if you can afford them <laughs> very cheap if you need a strategy on strategy you can still go to bcg they'll charge you for it but if you want to learn how to choose your strategy and execute the right decision then please read the book thank you So good evening, everybody. Um, uh, uh, Jamie said that you could only be here for friendship. Um, actually, one of the big questions that we deal with in the book is: Is strategy dead? And I like to take the evidence that we have an audience that is actually not 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 dead. I'm a I'm an optimist. So let me just say a few words about the content of the book. Um, I've learned that these events are very culturally specific. And uh, when we did the Americas launch, the publisher said to me, "Do not talk about content. This is a networking event." <laughs> and then I went to Switzerland. and they gave me 2 hours to give a summary of the book and they said Mr. Rees please remember the swiss like details um, so I'm, i'm guessing that you might be a, a, a sort of a more of an american event but uh, uh, let me let me see um so uh, we started this book um to answer a very simple question which is um the art of winning uh, has it changed do, do the old approaches um still work or not and we use the evidence of uh, 35,000 companies over 60 years and uh, we did interviews with um with with gracious CEO some of whom were on the panel about their experiences and we did simulations of different strategy environments and in answer to the question is strategy dead would say absolutely not in fact i could even make a dramatic claim that it's a matter of life and death so if we use the language of insurance here's an interesting statistic that pops out of the uh, analysis which is that the five year mortality rate of all public companies in the US is now 32%. So that means that um in 1965 um you could basically concentrate on performance and you could assume that your company would be around in five years time. Uh now that would be I think a little cavalier because there's a one in three chance that your company if it doesn't have the right strategy will not be around uh in in five years time. But the question is uh what are the strategies that uh that keep you out of this uh keep you out of this one third um now we looked at a lot of a lot of factors the the spotlight is often given to uh technology globalization social feedback loops 
But we think that the really essential change in business in the last 30 years is that the diversity of environments, in other words, high growth environments, low growth environments, shapeable environments, non-shapeable environments, predictable environments, unpredictable environments, the diversity of environments is now enormous. So the answer to the question, what is the right approach to strategy, is that it's a trick question. There is no one right approach to strategy. We need to match the approach to strategy uh, to the situation at hand. Um, so this is the key idea in the book, the strategy palette. And let me quickly step through the, the colors of the palette. We used an artistic analogy uh, because the strategy that we're talking about here is not mechanistic. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and, and judgment involved. So let's start with the familiar, the classical strategy which is analyze, plan, execute. We're all familiar with this. Some people claim that it's dead. It's not dead, but it's no longer a panacea. And a very good example of that is, for instance, the confectionery business, a very predictable business uh, where good uh, analyze, plan, execute uh, is, is still very important. Then we have the second color in the palette, the adaptive approach. Uh, this is, uh, I, I guess, the most popular meme in strategy right now, uh, which is, if you can't plan, don't. Uh, copy a lesson from biology, an experiment, and select the things that work, and uh, scale up those things that work. Um, so uh, our interpretation is that TCS is an excellent proponent of, of this style of strategy, but we'll, we'll probably hear whether that's, in, in fact, the case or not. Then we have the visionary strategy. We all know the visionary strategy. The visionary strategy doesn't analyze the market because there is no market. The entrepreneur creates the market. The algorithm here is envision, realize, and persist. So that's an old idea. But what is new is that this is now a strategy for large corporations. Why? Because the frequency with which large corporations are overturned by maverick upstarts is at an all-time high. So large corporations, too, better be visionary if they don't want to be in that one third of companies that are not going to be around in five years' time. <clears throat> then we have the shaping strategy. The shaping strategy is the most exotic form of strategy. And probably the most abused word in business right now is ecosystem. Everybody has an ecosystem. We like to call our supply chains ecosystems. Uh, but if we're very strict, there is a set of companies out there uh, that are not trying to have a good strategy for their company, they're trying to create a winning ecosystem to reshape an entire industry and to be the orchestrator of those, uh, those ecosystems. And a gentleman in the audience was just telling me that, in fact, um, this idea was anticipated in the Bhagavad Gita, um, in the idea that, um, that winning a war can solve, uh, can solve larger social issues. And so it's a very holistic con concept of strategy that is as much about um, collaboration as it is about competition. And then we have the renewal strategy. Um, I've just done, come from Australia where I did, uh, I met uh, more than 50 companies and I asked them all, um, have you undertaken a transformation program recently? And uh, actually all of them had, everyone. And the reason is that in a fast changing environment, it's easy for large companies to get out of step with that environment, so they, they need to renew. And that's a very different approach to strategy again. So five colors of the strategy palette, we need to pick the right one for the right situation. That's the key idea of the book. Um, now, younger companies have an easier time here because they just need to choose the right approach. Older companies and larger companies have to do two things. They have to choose the right approach and they have to forget and move away from the old approach. So that's doubly difficult. Um, scale brings with it inertia. So the, the key lessons for, uh, uh, for large companies really are three, and that is to build three capabilities to be able to use the palette. One of them is adaptive practices, not only planning, but also ex disciplined experimentation. And the second capability for uh, the rejuvenation agenda of large companies is shaping practices, not taping, taking the environment as given, but actually shaping the environment as part of your strategy. And then the third one is mastering what we call ambidexterity. So ambidexterity, the ability to write with both hands. 3% of the human population can write fluently with both hands. 
Interestingly, 3% of companies can both run the company effectively and reinvent the company at the same time. It's tremendously valuable, tremendously hard, and very important in a fast-changing environment to not only run the business, but to reinvent the business. Um, now, on the theme of the uh, artistic analogy, the, the strategy palette, here's a beautiful picture of a landscape with some trees and a river and some mountains. And it so happens that the mountain line and the river represent the, the value of ambidexterity. So if we plot the value generated by ambidextrous companies, companies that can run and reinvent the business, use multiple styles in the strategy palette against the, uh, uh, the average of all companies, we see this tremendous difference in, 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 in value generation. Um, so a final word. Um, uh, the, the word uh, the, the title has the word strategy twice in it. Your strategy needs a strategy. Uh, but actually, in writing your strategy needs a strategy, we had a little strategy problem uh, ourselves, which was we had evidence that even if companies understood the ideas in the book, they would not necessarily be able to implement them. There's a gap between understanding and the capability to implement. Um, so we, uh, we actually designed an iPad game, um, which I can uh, show any of you that are uh, interested. Generally, when I speak to people in our generation and show them the game, they say, that's really cool. My kids would love that. Um, uh, but if you're, uh, if you're a kid at heart and you would like to play with the game, maybe we, maybe we can play with it afterwards. Uh, but essentially, we have a book and we have an experiential game. And um, we've learned a lot of interesting things by, by releasing the game at the same time. For example, we learned that uh, there are very, very few individuals that are naturally good at the thinking skills required for each of these environments. But the good news is that with practice, everybody can improve their score in, uh, in, in, in all environments. So let me maybe uh, pause there and hand back to, uh, uh, to Jan May for the, for the panel discussion. Thanks, Mark. So, uh, you know, I'm going to embarrass some of you because Chandra, who is in the book, was telling me that he was trying desperately to catch up with it because he was coming for this panel. So, you know, because that is such a big disgrace, Chandra, you have to explain to me what is TCS's strategy and does it fit into the adaptive mode or not? Oh, straight away, okay. <laughs> First of all, uh, congratulations, Martin and uh, Janmai. I think a uh, great book. Um, I think all these uh, different forms of strategy uh, that you articulated are all applicable to every format some point in time, I guess. Um, from my point of view, uh, I think in our industry, uh, we have to cope with a huge change in technology. And uh, it's only getting faster and more rapid than ever before. And we, on the other side, we have to work with companies who are in uh, different situations. Some are successful, some are facing difficulties. Um, everyone doesn't um, adopt technology at the same time, especially in today's uh, conditions. Um, so it's important to be nimble. It's, nimble. it's important to spot the trends and uh, make the investments. And also try and make out what this technology means for an industry, for a customer in the market. Okay, Because financial services firms in the US behave differently versus Europe versus uh, Latin America and so on. Um, so given that, it's, uh, it's very important to do that. Uh, second thing is, I think scale is very important. I've always uh, said, even in the book, I've uh, said that scale is very important. Um, so in that sense, uh, your uh, first classical approach is very critical, especially in mature offerings. So while we are always investing in the future offerings, there are certain offerings which become mature. So there we've got to apply the classical approach. The way we do that is uh, we, we never use the word big, we always use the word scale. Because uh, big always uh, sets the tone of bureaucracy in the mind, scale always sets the tone of leverage. So we believe that uh, scale and leverage is very important. Um, for being agile, that is in your uh, adaptive strategy, I think uh, you, call it, uh, you call it fast, we call it agile. Being agile is very important. We do it in a, in a 4E model, we say. Essentially, it is about experimenting all the time and making investments. Um, and then when um, 
uh, when something succeeds, you take it to the next scale. When you prove it, then you've got to evangelize, uh, both within and outside. Then you kind of exploit. So we call it the uh, uh, 4E model, uh, which uh, is pretty useful uh, to incubate uh, different things. We incubate uh, services offerings. We incubate product offerings. Nowadays, we incubate a lot of platform offerings. Many such platform or, uh, offerings we try, and some point in time when um, we, we we don't think it will scale up, we kill it. So uh, otherwise, we kind of uh, we kind of scale it. Uh, from a thesis point of view, I'll tell you traditionally it's uh, it's it has always been very difficult to kill anything. So you start um, you experiment, and then you enable it, then you evangelize it, then you exploit it, but um, when, when you enable it and you think that it is not going anywhere, um, killing is very difficult. And that's where uh, discipline is required. Um, to experiment is easy because uh, people come with ideas and they want you to fund it. So there are more people uh, who are asking for uh, um, new things to be done. Um, you know, that's, that's not a problem. The second stage, uh, enable is also is fine. But the problem you have is after that, whether you evangelize it or you kill it. And that's an uh, area where we have always found it difficult. And I have tried very hard to uh, drive that discipline. We have brought in a lot of focus uh, in terms of what we should scale and what we should kill. Um, then once you do that, we are able to, we are able to uh, execute successfully. Thank you, uh, Chandra. Adi, you know, what Martin was saying, and you fall in this very tenuous space as being a conglomerate, you are in different businesses. So Martin says you need to be ambidextrous, and that's only 3% of the, of the population. How have you managed to get to be that 3% with different businesses, finding out the right strategy for the right pieces, and then being able to scale it and grow it? Yes, being ambidextrous, of course, always helps. Even if you look at cricket today, uh, the way they do their strokes, right-handers go the other way around and do it, and are very successful. 15, 20 years ago, this didn't happen at all. So clearly, you've got to adapt with that. But most of our businesses are consumer-facing. We have several other businesses. They're the classical strategy works best. Size is very important. Size and scale is extremely important. And value creation is mainly in intangibles. So uh, intangible values created mainly in the brand is what gives strength to a business and then you can use that strength. It even gives a longer life to a business. Uh, Changes in technology, like Chandra was talking, are not that critical, although those are also becoming important. So basically, we feel that we have to follow the classical strategy, but adapt to many of the other strategies that are mentioned in some parts of each of our businesses. And of course, we have different businesses. Uh, what is getting extremely important is change in technology not just in information technology, which is also important in some of our businesses. For example, in our consumer businesses, we have to distribute products to uh, the nine million retail outlets in India, and of course to many outside India too. Now that can be done best done with using information technology, so we have to be ahead of the game uh, in those spheres also. But uh, what is extremely important is that you keep up with the times, but yet stick to the classical strategy of building size, which really gives you long-term strength. And uh, Adi, just to follow on on that, do the at the at the unit level, do you actually get the units to do it, or do you do it at the center? Well, a little bit of both. So clearly we have central strategic thinking so that there is coordination between the different units, especially if the different units are in the same company. But of course, there is a lot of strategic thinking in each of the uh, 
businesses or companies uh, as the case may be because there could be some difference even in just say FMCG there might be a different strategy required in a certain kind of product in a different one in others so it, it needs to be managed both at a central level and at the local level and different inputs have to come in. Uh, Deepak, you are in every financial services business and these days there is a joke going on that uh, the, you know, there has been a bit of a switch. Banks have become not-for-profit entities and regulators have become for-profit entities. And, uh, you know, you are in insurance, general insurance, in banking, in an NBFC. So when you think of these different approaches, what approach do you really use? No, first of all, I must admit, Martin, I can't write with both my hands. I can <laughs> barely write with one hand. Uh, no, if you, if you take our example and uh, if you want me to talk on our experiences, I think most of what you write, the five mantras, the palette, strategy palette, most of it I agree with. For instance, big is beautiful, but big can also be bad. But in financial services sector, you need scale to be viable. So you have to be big to be viable, to take shocks. Um, retail lending, retail business requires, um, we are in the retail business. So it requires scale, it requires numbers. We have 5 million borrowers accounts. And um, so we require a strategy how to continue to increase the number, how to continue to serve them. And, um, then if you look at, uh, if, if you look at um, uh, housing as a percentage of GDP, we are the lowest in practically all parts of Asia. Housing as a percentage is barely 9% in India. In China it is 20, in Malaysia, in Thailand it is 25, 30. So we have a long way to go. Now if we want to take the market share and we undercut interest rate because it's so sensitive interest rates that we can clean up the market. Instead of having a 25% market share, we can have an 80% market share. But then the last mantra, we will not be able to maintain that. We will not be viable. So we cannot afford to be irrational and market share is not a game in financial services because it's too dangerous. Um, the second point you say is be fast. We have to be fast. Uh, we have to be agile, we have to be alert, we should know what the competition is doing. But again, unlike Adi's industry or even Chandra's, a financial product can be copied overnight. Uh, replicating a financial product does not require any innovation. If a competition starts a product, you can start one immediately. So what is the product patent we have in the financial sector? The product patent we have is quality of service. Unless we give service quality, we will not get patient. You know, today we are in a buyer's market. If you don't, if a customer is unhappy, he'll just walk away with his business. So uh, customer service, we have to be fast with customer service and the quality of customer service. Be first. Certainly there's a first mover advantage we had because we started many years in housing finance market. But we had no model to emulate. We had no one to go f to learn how to begin, how to start, how to disperse, how to have your... Um, so we had to create our own model, but it was more learning by mistakes. We had to, but we had the luxury of time because no one else was around. So first mover certainly has a huge advantage. And we were the, we were the first to get the life insurance uh, license. So again, we had... But the point is that in the asset management, we were the last entrant, but today we are the largest asset manager in India and the most profitable. Now, this asset management does require performance because investors do look at performance, but the trust, the credibility, the confidence, the public, the investors have, that really helps. So, you need not be first, but you can still get to that stage. Um, but first, obviously, has... Uh, now, the tough one, the tricky one is be the orchestrator. So, what we have tried to do is we have tried to create, orchestrate, a culture in HDFC which is an open door policy, irrespective of no hierarchies, and empower the frontline staff. The frontline staff are the ones who are in contact with the customers. 
we need them to train. We need to train them to be receptive, to take nonsense of the customer and give us feedback of what the customer wants from us. So it's very important to have an open door policy and a lack, uh, no hierarchical uh, setup, easily approachable. Uh, that, that I think is, is critical. Like in the early days, the government asked us to start more housing finance companies. And we worked with Canada, we have one company, we worked with state banks. So we created competition to ourselves. But we cannot be the orchestrator when the uh, distribution system changed, when the banks came into the market. The banks are now going, giving doorstep service. We had for 20 years, 25 years, customers come to us. Now we have to, we have to go to the customer. And uh, so we had to have more feet on street, we had to have sales, so we had to change the strategy across because the banks thought that if we go to the customer's house or office, it'll be easier for us to get business rather than wait for them. And I think the last point, being viable, I think there's no dispute, you have to be viable to be successful, you have to be viable to um, uh, satisfy your stakeholders. Thank you, Deepak. Martin, I uh, cautioned all of you that I was going to make Martin do the heavy lifting as he did with the book and as he will do today and we got him with all the jet lag. So how would you put this all together, Martin? What is the last message you want to uh, give everyone here about how they should think about their strategy? Um, I think as, um, yeah, as far as uh, all, all business people should be strategists, I think it takes time to time. Because essentially we're, uh, we're moving away from a time when we have a, a single formula, uh, a single way of looking at, a single framework of looking strategy. And uh, the dynamics and unpredictable at the, the time require us to, uh, to mix and match in a more artistic and creative way the different possibilities of strategy. <coughs> um, actually, I'll just add a, a little story that this book began in India in a way. Uh, when I took over the uh, BCG Strategy Institute, um, one of our senior advisors, Aaron Meyer, said to me, look, if you want to see the new stuff being made, come to India. So actually, my very first CEO interview um, for the book was, uh, was, uh, was in India. And, um, and, and I heard some, some very interesting strategic innovations that got me thinking, you know, what is going on in, in, uh, in strategy? And I, I do see India as a very a special place, a hothouse for these ideas that we're talking about today. Um, you know, number one, because in this uh, dynamic and fast-growing economy, um, it requires experimentation, and I indeed see a lot of experimentation. Um, I also think you have a lot of uh, 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 family enterprises and strong leaders that actually can uh, probably make change happen uh, more easily uh, than in a, a sort of a complex uh, uh, Western uh, public company. And then, of course, you have um, a lot of conglomerates, and uh, you know, the conglomerates, of course, most conglomerates nowadays are have this thing called the conglomerate discount, which is investors look at their complexity and they discount them relative to the sum of the parts. So conglomerates have a, a special uh, uh, imperative to, to, to make sure that they're applying exactly the right approach in each, uh, in each business. So I think it's an exciting time, especially for, uh, for these ideas uh, in, uh, in India, is my opinion. I don't want to stand between the, you know, as Martin said, that this is this in between, between two hours of detail versus just networking. <laughs> so we are going to close it at this point. I'm going to give you all some, uh, a palette, which is a bouquet, which has got a palette in it. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming. And, uh, you know, please now let's uh, sit down and have some fun talking to each other.